Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Immortal News. Today we will be bringing you a list of famous celebrities who have passed away in the last few days, with most of their departures being announced to the public in the last 24 hours. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a like. Number 10. Burt Young, a storied life in film and a lasting legacy in Hollywood. Burt Young, the iconic actor best remembered for his role as Pauly Panino in the Rocky series, sadly passed away on October 8th in Los Angeles at the age of 83. The cause of death has not been specified. Born Gerald Tommaso de Luis on April 30th, 1940 in Queens, New York, Young's journey in life took him from serving in the United States Marine Corps to the glitz of Hollywood. He launched his acting career in 1969 and went on to grace over 160 film and television projects including renowned films like Chinatown and Once Upon a Time in America. His performance in the first Rocky movie garnered him an Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actor, cementing his position in cinema history. Apart from acting, Young's talents extended to writing with two stage plays to his credit and a historical novel, Endings. An accomplished painter, his artwork even made an appearance in the 2006 film Rocky Balboa. Sylvester Stallone, his co-star and friend, expressed heartfelt grief over Young's passing, remembering him as an incredible man and artist. Fans too shared their sorrow, reminiscing about Young's impact and the iconic character of Pauly. In the backdrop of his prolific career, Burt Young's humor shone bright. Reflecting on his enduring career, he once quipped, All I have to do is look in the mirror. My name is Young, Burt Young, I'm eternally young. Tribute to Burt Young Number 9. Dwight Twilley, the power pop maestro with a legacy of melody. Dwight Twilley, a renowned figure in the American pop rock scene, passed away on October 18th at the age of 72. Hailing from Tulsa, Oklahoma, he was the genius behind top 20 hits, I'm on Fire and Girls. His artistry in the realm of power pop music established him as a notable figure in the industry. A serendipitous meeting with Phil Seymour in 1967 at a theater showing the Beatles' A Hard Day's Night led to the creation of the Dwight Twilley Band, producing hits and shaping sounds for many years to come. Their story from the alleys of Tulsa to the gleaming studios of Los Angeles is a testament to their commitment to music and their enduring partnership. Despite facing various challenges, including changes in label distribution and market dynamics, Twilly's passion for music never waned. Twilly's solo career saw continued success, with albums that spanned decades and an ever-evolving sound that still stayed true to his power-pop roots. His last album, Always, released in 2014, showcased collaborations with celebrated artists and once again proved his unyielding spirit and dedication to the art. Beyond the music, he was also a doting father, encapsulated in his book, Questions from Dad, which depicted his heartfelt relationship with his daughter Dion, his impact on the music world, his persistent pursuit of melodic perfection, and his undying spirit will forever be remembered. Dwight Twilley's melodies may have faded into the silent night, but their echoes will reverberate in the hearts of many for generations to come. Tribute to Dwight Twilley. Number 8. The 45 King Mark James, Pioneering Sounds of Hip-Hop's Golden Era Mark James, the prodigious producer who lent his genius to iconic tracks for Eminem, Jay-Z, and many more, passed away on October 19th, just days after his 62nd birthday. The cause of death remains undisclosed, but he was known to be in the hospital earlier in the week. Born in the Bronx, DJ Mark the 45 King left an unfading mark on the hip-hop genre. His unique sound, characterized by distinct horns and heavy drums, 
made him a coveted collaborator in the industry. Notably, his works included Eminem's Stan, Jay-Z's Hard Knock Life, and the remix of Madonna's Keep It Together. James was a key member of the iconic Flavor Unit crew, which boasted talents like Queen Latifah, Naughty by Nature, and Apache. Furthermore, his vinyl breakbeats have become legendary, shaping the 80s and 90s hip-hop DJ scene. His innovation and creativity in music were only rivaled by his humility and warmth as a person. DJ Premier, in paying tribute, recounted how DJ Mark the 45 King introduced him to Gangstar, setting the stage for his own illustrious career. Many industry luminaries, from Diamond D to Rockefeller Records co-founder Kareem Biggs Burke, have shared heartfelt memories and condolences. Mark the 45 King James's legacy will forever be etched in hip-hop history as a trailblazer who transformed beats into storytelling tools, impacting generations to come. Tribute to Mark the 45 King James. Number 7. Edward Blyer, visionary pioneer of cable TV and architect of modern media. Edward Blyer, a towering figure who foresaw the transformative potential of cable television and played a pivotal role in molding the modern media landscape, passed away at his home in East Hampton, New York on October 17th. He had just celebrated his 94th birthday the day before. His remarkable journey from a journalist to becoming a seminal force in the evolution of Time Warner Cable underscores a legacy marked by innovation, strategic foresight, and a profound impact on the content consumption patterns of generations. Throughout his illustrious career, Blyer amalgamated practical wisdom with imaginative strategies that heralded a new era in television. His strategic acumen was instrumental in transforming Warner Brothers television and redefining the essence of content delivery and consumption. A steward of creative evolution, Blyer played a crucial role in the development of iconic cable networks such as Nickelodeon, MTV, and the Movie Channel, breathing fresh life into vintage classics and catapulting them into unprecedented realms of commercial success. Born on October 16, 1929 in New York City, Edward embarked on his media odyssey with a focus on journalism and a penchant for identifying future trends in media technology. A man of principles, he championed diversity and inclusivity, steering ABC's daytime programming towards a more representative and inclusive paradigm in a transformative period of civil rights activism. In the tapestry of his contributions, Blyer's strategic partnerships and leadership illuminated new pathways for Time Warner Cable, cementing its position as an industry titan. He leaves behind a rich legacy of pioneering contributions that reverberate through the corridors of the cable industry, shaping the contours of a transformative media epoch. Tribute to Edward Blyer. Number six, Tony Husband, a beacon of political satire and British cartooning. Tony Husband, the revered political cartoonist with a sharp wit, left a void in the world of satire and humor. The news of his passing at the age of 73 was confirmed by his family. Born in Blackpool, Husband's contributions to political satire, particularly through Private Eye magazine, are legendary. The tragic circumstances of his death are as poignant as they are ironic. He suffered a heart attack while on his way to a Private Eye gathering in London, collapsing on the iconic Westminster Bridge. His son, Paul Husband, expressed his grief and admiration for his father, recalling the times they shared and the impact his father had on him. He was everything to me, Paul shared, remarking on the cruel irony of how Tony survived countless private eye parties over the years, yet the most recent one claimed him. Tony Husband's legacy is enshrined in his prolific and humorous creations, most notably, Yobbs and the numerous iconic cartoons he crafted for private eye since 1985. Tributes from peers like Nick Newman, Dean Patterson and Stanley Chow highlight the respect and admiration he commanded within the industry. Not just a celebrated cartoonist, Husband was a friend, mentor, and source of inspiration to many. Prominent figures like author Richard Osman and comedian Al Murray have expressed their sorrow. 
emphasizing how husband's work has touched and brightened countless lives. The warmth, wit, and humor that characterized his work are a testament to his enduring legacy. Tribute to Tony Husband Number 5. Ari Flo Weintraub, a pillar of the fighting game community and a legacy of skill and camaraderie. The global fighting game community mourns the loss of one of its brightest stars, Ari Flo Weintraub, tragically passed away on October 16th, just after celebrating his 39th birthday. Originating from Park Ridge, Illinois, Weintraub emerged as a key figure in the Chicago area FGC, later shining on the international stage and eventually residing in Las Vegas, Nevada. Known as Flowey, he was a versatile player, excelling in multiple fighting games like Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and Mortal Kombat, to name a few. In 2011, he joined the pioneering esports team, Evil Geniuses, further solidifying his stature in the gaming arena. Beyond his competitive spirit, Weintraub was a beacon of innovation in game tech and was renowned as a treasured training partner and an individual who always lightened the mood. Though he had stepped back from active competitions, fellow E's presence was still deeply felt in the FGC, maintaining strong connections and contributing to prominent gaming platforms and shows. Professionally, he ventured into game testing and had roles in game development projects, notably with Street Fighter III, Third Strike Online Edition. The news of his sudden demise following a series of strokes has deeply saddened the community. Fellow gamer Justin Wong's heartfelt tribute encapsulates the sentiment, He lived a great life. I love you and keep a seat for me so we can run a set. In memory of Weintraub, donations are being directed to Shabbat organizations in Northbrook, Illinois and Henderson, Nevada. Tribute to Ari Flo Weintraub. Number 4. Ladondrick Rowe, a beacon of inspiration and a pillar of athletic excellence. Ladondrick Rowe, affectionately known as Coach Dondrick, sadly left us on October 14th at the age of 44, following a brave battle with cancer. Born with an innate ability to bring out the best in athletes, Coach Dondrick started his coaching journey at a tender age, guiding his seven siblings towards excellence. His mother, Marcinia Rowe, fondly remembered how her son always found potential in others, pushing them to achieve more. This same drive, she noted, propelled him to continuously better himself. Throughout his life, Coach Dondrick's impact resonated with many, helping talents like Sammy and Jalen Watkins ascend to the NFL. Patrick Ryan, a former player, recounted the intense standards set by Coach Dondrick. Such was the vigor of his training sessions that young Patrick once took refuge inside a restroom to avoid completing a challenging workout. Coach Dondrick's passion was evident in every role he undertook. Serving most recently as a defensive back coach at Charlotte High School, his dedication never wavered. Even while battling cancer, he was on the field, coaching and motivating. Charlotte head coach Court Menser praised Coach Dondrick's unmatched ability to instill intensity and bring out the best in young athletes. Marcinia Rowe reminisced about her son's deep affection for his players. Even though he didn't have children of his own, he lovingly referred to his players as his kids, asserting that he had many more children than one could fathom. Tribute to Coach LaDondrick Rowe Number three, Kathleen Johnson. Airing, a beacon of faith, love, and devotion, Kathleen Johnson. Airing, an epitome of grace and unwavering faith, departed from this world on October 15th at the age of 82 in Bountiful, Utah. Born on May 11, 1941 in San Francisco, 
Kathleen was a woman of numerous virtues, an accomplished student, a loving partner, a nurturing mother, and a pillar of spiritual strength. Kathleen's life was marked by her commitment to the teachings of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and her profound support and companionship to her husband, President Henry B. Ehring. Throughout her life, Kathleen demonstrated an extraordinary commitment to her family and her faith. Her journey of devotion began alongside her husband, supporting him through pivotal career transitions, always placing faith at the center of life's decisions. Kathleen's nurturing spirit wasn't just confined to her household. She was generous with her love and compassion, always ready to extend a hand of comfort to those in distress, personifying the teachings of Christ in her daily interactions. As an embodiment of love and support, Kathleen's influence permeated beyond her family, leaving indelible marks of kindness and encouragement. Her talents were manifold, from being a gifted writer to a cherished editorial counsel to her husband. Despite facing challenges like memory lapses in her later years, Kathleen's spirit remained resilient, and her connection with the divine grew stronger. Kathleen's life remains a testimony of steadfast faith, enduring love, and humble service. Her legacy will continue to inspire, teach, and guide the hearts of many who had the privilege of knowing and learning from her extraordinary life. Tribute to Kathleen Johnson Ehring. Number 2. George Baird visionary architect and advocate for public spaces. George Baird, a luminary in the world of architecture and urban design, passed away on October 17th at the age of 84. Born in Toronto on August 25th, 1939, Baird's ingrained mark on the architectural scene spans from Canada to the halls of Harvard and beyond. Throughout his distinguished career, he was revered not just as an architect, but also as a scholar, educator, and theorist. Baird's professional journey began with a Bachelor of Architecture from the University of Toronto, after which he pursued postgraduate research at University College London. This international exposure not only shaped his own architectural perspectives, but also allowed him to co-edit a groundbreaking work, Meaning in Architecture, with Charles Jenks. A true champion for urban design, Baird was not just content with academia. He founded George Baird Architect and Associates in 1972 which evolved over the years, culminating in the establishment of Baird Sampson, Newart Architects Inc., the firm's projects such as the Cloud Gardens Park in Toronto and the first LEED certified public school in Canada showcase Baird's dedication to sustainable and innovative design. However, it was Baird's theories on public space and its importance in the modern urban fabric that truly set him apart. His publications like the Space of Appearance and Public Space Cultural Political Theory Street Photography delved deep into the intersection of architecture, public spaces, and human consciousness. Baird's reflections on the changing dynamics of public and private spaces, especially in the context of postmodern cities, remained seminal contributions to architectural theory. His legacy, blending architectural practice with profound theoretical explorations, will undoubtedly continue to inspire generations of architects and urban planners. Tribute to George Baird. Breaking News. News 1. In a shocking turn of events, former attorney to Donald Trump, Sidney Powell, has entered a guilty plea in relation to the Georgia election subversion case. Her admission arrives just a day prior to her anticipated trial. Powell confessed to her participation in the January 2021 unauthorized access to Coffee County's election systems. Allegedly in collaboration with local GOP figures and Trump enthusiasts, they aimed to unveil potential election manipulation against Trump. Powell's penalty, as recommended by Fulton County prosecutors, will encompass six years of probation. In addition to this, she will be mandated to present an apology letter to Georgia's residents, compensate nearly $9,000 in restitution, surrender relevant documents, 
and testify in subsequent trials. While Trump was not explicitly mentioned in Powell's plea documents or the recent plea hearing, he remains a co-defendant in the Fulton County case. Powell had previously touted conspiracy narratives about alleged 2020 election fraud. Bail bondsman Scott Hall had previously accepted guilt in the expansive racketeering case. Now with Powell's admission, she becomes the second individual to plead guilty, while the other 17, including Trump, maintain their innocence. The implications of this plea are substantial, signaling a significant advancement in the case for prosecutors. This development also reshapes the trajectory of the upcoming trial, originally set to commence on October 20th. News 2. Miriam Margolius, globally recognized for her portrayal of Professor Sprout in the iconic Harry Potter series, gave fans a heartwarming and cheeky update about her recent health endeavors. At 82, the beloved actress underwent a transcatheter aortic valve replacement, a modern alternative to traditional open-heart surgery. While appearing on the Table Manners podcast, Margolias humorously disclosed, I now have a cow's heart. She further illuminated her comment, explaining that her aortic valve has been replaced with one sourced from a cow. Despite the daunting nature of the procedure, the actress's indomitable spirit shined through as she jestingly described the procedure to Jesse Ware, saying they made two small incisions, then pow! Just like that, your aortic valve is moved. The revelation evoked an outpour of support and wishes for her speedy recovery on social media. Margolias, who has openly discussed her health challenges in the past, expressed her regret over diet choices and the potential impact on her spinal condition. I've limited my life. I should have been stronger, she admitted in a candid conversation with British Vogue. The actress's journey continues as she confronts the effects of spinal stenosis and osteoporosis. Margolias embraces the future, even if it means adapting to potential mobility constraints. News 3. Susan Sullivan, best known for her role in Castle, recently took to Twitter, bringing to light her recent health challenges. Embodying resilience and spirit, the 80-year-old actress posted an uplifting message alongside a candid snapshot taken during her hospital stay, captioning the photo with, Life's surprising little turns try to be ready for them with humor and hope. On we go. Sullivan shared a glimpse of her current circumstances. The picture showcased her, dressed in a hospital gown and yellow surgical mask, gripping an oxygen rack and an IV pole, indicative of her medical situation. Although the initial post was shrouded in mystery, keen-eyed fans noted clues about her condition. The catheter in her forearm connected to IV bags and a chest tube, typically used to drain air or fluids, ensuring the lungs inflate correctly. A day later, on October 17th, Sullivan lifted the veil on her diagnosis. She had undergone successful surgery for lung cancer. While acknowledging the challenges of the healing journey, she emphasized her gratitude, thanking fans for the outpour of love and well wishes. Her bravery and transparency are sure to inspire many during their own battles. News 4. New York bids a heartfelt farewell to Jack Courtney, the resilient and loving father of Governor Kathy Hochul, who breathed his last at 87. A beacon of hard work and perseverance, Courtney's journey from a Buffalo area steel plant worker to the father of New York's first elected female governor has been a tale of inspiration. The son of Irish immigrants, Courtney's life was woven into the fabric of the American dream. He laid a foundation of tenacity and work ethic for his family. Values echoed in the governor's strides in public service. His tales of toil, from the corridors of Canisius College to the smoky steel plants, resonated in the ethos of middle-class life, leaving an ineradicable impact on the community and his daughter's governance. Jack Courtney's legacy lives on in the spirited leadership of Governor Hochul, as she carries the flame of his enduring principles, marking a journey from a humble mobile home to the echelons of state leadership. In his memory, hearts mourn and flags lower, commemorating the life of a remarkable man who shaped a legacy of service and resilience. Number 1. Heinrich Messner, a skiing pioneer and titan of the slopes. Heinrich Heine Messner, the legendary Tyrolean skier, passed away at the age of 84. Born in the Viptal region, Messner's impact on the world of skiing is undeniable. He was the champion of the very first Ski World Cup race, a testament to his prowess on the slopes, 
which he demonstrated in Berchtesgaden in 1967. Though it remained his only World Cup win, his achievements did not stop there. At the 1968 Olympics in Grenoble, Messner took home two bronze medals in giant slalom and combination. His tenacity was evident again in 1972, where despite battling a severe bout of flu, he clinched a bronze medal in the downhill at the Sapporo Olympics. His illustrious career boasts of nine second-place finishes, 17 top-three finishes, and 50 top-ten finishes, securing his place amongst the giants of the Ski World Cup. In addition to these feats, he narrowly missed medals at the Grenoble Olympics in 1968 with a fourth place in the downhill, and at the 1970 Ski World Championship in Groden, finishing fourth in the giant slalom. Beyond his own competitive achievements, Messner, transitioning to a coaching role at just 33, played an instrumental part in shaping the careers of athletes such as Anne-Marie Prawl, Monica Kasserer, and Brigitte Tochnig in the 1970s. Upon retirement, Messner's passion for skiing continued as he operated a ski school and a guesthouse. Tribute to Heinrich Messner.